college football talk for the end of the show. Okay. I'm a little excited about this. Um, North Carolina gets a recruit from five star, uh, five star cornerback Tony Grimes. He is out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. He is an absolute stud. He's a top ten kid at all of the different recruiting services. I think ESPN's got him number six. Two four seven has got him super far up there. Two four seven's got him number seven overall, number one cornerback in the country, and he is the highest rated recruit that North Carolina has ever gotten. Now this makes two five stars in this class for Mac Brown. He's also they're up to number three in the uh, in the official rankings. Um, I mean this is this is big time stuff. This is big time stuff. Uh, I'm I'm just I take that back. He's the number two rated recruit behind Marvin Austin by right, by very little. Marvin Austin signed with Carolina in 07, um, yep. and he was the number four overall player in the composite rankings. But this is big-time stuff. Uh, I was doing a little digging last night. I found out Mac Brown is actually just a few months younger, or no, a few months older than Nick Saban. Yeah. Mac Brown was born in August. We've talked about that before. He looks really old, but he's but he's not, and he, and he is old. But that means this, these other guys that look younger are old as well. Now he he brought in some recruiters on his staff, and he yes. built his staff almost perfectly. Dre Bly, who he, was a cornerback at North Carolina way back in the day, we talked about this when he got hired there. His staff was the most perfect thing that we liked about. Yeah, the hiring. We didn't like the Mac Brown hiring. We might. Wait, have been wrong. That, I know I didn't. I'm not gonna speak for we you. We were we were I weird didn't. about the the staff. Remember because it but was I, Jay Bates, the defensive coordinator from Army, and it was yeah. uh, uh, what's the guy that was at Ole Miss, Phil Longo, uh, Phil Longo. from Ole yeah. Miss, who ran like a air raid kind of thing. And then you've got Jay Bates, who is used to playing defense for about 20 minutes a game at Army. So. <laughs> Yeah, and you're right. You're right. It's like, where are the other 20 minutes going to be? Because Phil Longo's only used to having the ball for 20 minutes, and Jay's only used to playing defense for 20 minutes. So right. That's right. We didn't like this hire at all, maybe. Yeah, it was, it was it weird. All. I'm trying to give myself a little more credit. But they got In some recruits. Yeah. They got How some is recruits. this working? At, because, they, because the rest of the staff is filled with guys that can go out and get kids. Bottom line. Is this line. a situation where they just broke open the, bo- the wallet? Well, Joseph actually jumps in and says, is Nike making big, quote, donations to North Carolina, dot, 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 again? Uh, trust me, if North Carolina were getting don- our donations, they would be using that on basketball. Like, no, that's- I don't know about that. I don't know about that at all, man, because football is where the money is at for the school. Well, I'll you, say this. Listen, if I feed football and I help them get good at football, I don't have to pay for basketball as much. Uh, that's, that's true. You might because be right they about that. Their, they generate their own money, and then at some point in time, I can stop feeding the machine. This because is because the machine gets big enough to feed itself. Damien said, "Is Adidas investing in North Carolina?" Nope, that's a Jordan brand school, brother. That is a Adidas. Jordan brand school, yeah. sir. Adidas sure ain't got you know nothing to do that. But uh, Matt said, like, "Petey Pablo, man. raise up, take your shirt off, spin it around your head, spin it like a helicopter, all that." Yeah, believe that. So. Here's the thing. You and I have talked about this. We've talked about the sleeping giants in the sport of college football before. North Carolina absolutely fits that bill. There is a ton of talent within four or five hours of that yes. campus, and yeah. it was just— They've just never been able to get it. Yeah, it's—are uh, they ever—and and Matt Brown was the only one, really, that was able to do anything with it before, and then he left and went to Texas, sure. and then Texas got done with him, and, they, and, and Matt didn't come back, and nobody would give him a job. He wanted to come back. I remember he was up for a ton of different jobs— and nobody really wanted him. And he didn't really want to go to some of the smaller places. I totally understand that. But he gets back in. The boosters already know him. They, it, it's all the people that were the money people for the program before. And he's got this thing kicking again. Remember, Larry Fedora won 10 games, I think, in his first season there. Uh, they, they I have thought talent. Larry Fedora was going to be the shit at that school. Yeah, we, we both thought that. and Could and, not have been more wrong. Well, here's the thing. Remember, he, he had like two or three straight years of just devastating injury luck. I mean, they lost a yeah. ton of guys with injuries, and, and then he was blamed for it. And obviously, the results are what the results are. You got to right. do something. But uh, Larry Fedora, now the offensive coordinator for your boy down at Baylor, um, 
you know, I mean, we'll see. I think Larry Fedora will be fine as an offensive coordinator. But, man, I'm telling you. Uh, ben said, is there a correlation that UNC's uh, basketball team sucked this year and the football program did well? It depends on what you mean by did well. I mean, they went 7-6. and six, So, And they are the hype team for this year. That was but, a hell of a lot better. I'll tell you this. That 7-6 and six team was a lot better than I thought they were going to be. Oh, yeah. We both thought it was going to be complete garbage because it was uh, a, yeah, a I was shift in everything. Wins. I mean, that's a, that's a big difference. Uh, ben said, is there a money shift there? Uh, Damien said, is Space Jam 2 going to be filmed there? Space Jam 2 was already done in L.A., my brother. L.A. Uh, I, here's – this is a sleeping giant. This is going to – this class that's coming in for 2021 is going to be massive. They're number three overall right now behind Clemson and Ohio State. And – it just keeps getting better. They got two five stars. They got 11 four stars already. And the majority of it is local kids. Like, it's all guys from North Carolina and the surrounding area. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. There's always been talent over there. And over the past two decades, yeah, everybody Clemson, has come in. Some go to South Carolina. They yeah. go to Georgia. They go to other schools. But they're not going to North Carolina. And now, that appears to be the shift. There is a coaching staff there that the kids love, the kids respect, and they're going there. Uh, Matt said, you predicted UNC's rise a few years ago. Yeah, we we talked about it, but it never came to fruition with Fedora. I, I didn't believe it. So, uh, now we, we both, I mean, uh, we've already said it. We both thought that Mac Brown and the coaching hires that he made were not a good fit. But, oh, Ben said they went to NC State for a while, too. Yeah, and now... Dave Doran is in a whole mess of trouble because, I mean, you go 4-8 and eight or whatever it was they went last year, and they don't look much better this year. So, I mean, we'll see. Uh, now, we'll say this. I don't expect North Carolina to be some 11-1 and one type of team this year. They're not there yet. But. You know, all these recruiting classes are usually two years away. Yes. So. Sophomores and freshmen don't. You, elite level guys, three to four a year for the whole all 130 schools show out. Yeah. Uh, don't forget also, last year, North Carolina, they had nine different games that were decided by one possession. So, I mean, a, a coin flip, and they weren't even going bowling last year. So, is what it is. Matt said the cheating scandal wrecked them. They were a top 15 then. Yeah, it, the Marvin Austin thing, all that kind of stuff that was going on, uh, players getting paid by agents, whatever else. Yeah, that was kind of a mess. But... And they were still able to pop back up with Larry Fedora and win 10 games, and, and they went to the uh, ACC championship game and all that. So we'll, we'll see. We are in year eight of the ACC having 14 teams and having the Atlantic and the Coastal divisions. The Coastal has already round-robined everybody into the title game. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens this year. So uh, I don't know that there's really a favorite. I mean, obviously, we're going to do our football previews once we get into August. Um by the way, everybody go to sportsbookreview.com. That's where we're going to be doing all of our stuff this year for college football. Winning Cures Everything still going to be around for anybody that has that question. We're doing our NFL, NBA, all the other sports will be right here. College football, we're working for sportsbookreview.com. Uh, Matt Miller said, people that doubted Mac Brown were stupid. He is energetic, fun, and a great coach. Well, we also thought that he made incredibly bad hires for his coordinators, and we thought that he was washed up. He's 68 years old. And he had already been through it at Texas. He had already been through it in North Carolina once upon a time. You don't typically see the guy come back around and build it back into a powerhouse. That typically doesn't happen. But you're right. Kids love this guy. He, he's got this, you know, father figure type of aura about him. And he just loves on kids. And today's society, maybe it's not so much the hard ass as the guy that's going to love on you. Yeah. So... You know, we yeah, we can admit we might have been stupid about this, but it looks good. You know, North Carolina, the, the sleeping giant is is waking up, it looks like. So, uh, Matt Miller said, as a UT fan, he just got bored. The stint at ESPN rejuvenated him. You agree with that? No, because the whole time he, at, at ESPN, he wanted another job. He just yes. couldn't get one. Yeah. And then he finally got in with people that already knew him and told him, hey, if y'all hire me, I'll come in and clean it up. You know, you don't have to keep me around too long because I'm getting old. The 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 coaching hires shouldn't work. Like, yeah, nothing about them makes sense to where they should work. They do. Yeah, it is working. Uh, Damien said, "I wonder which famous rich person paid UNC under the table to get their child to cheat on their test, like all these other colleges." 
Uh, I mean, this is a, a state school. So oh, yeah, you don't have to cheat to get in North Carolina. Yeah. I mean, it's, is- don't get me wrong. Like, their academic standards are pretty good, but you ain't got to cheat to get in. However, I will admit, that is likely going on everywhere, right? If it, You've probably donated something or whatever to get your kid into a school that their test scores Listen, probably said they shouldn't have gotten into. I, We disagree there. None of these state schools, anybody's cheating to get in. They'll take anybody's money and they'll accept anybody. Well, but that, see, that's the thing. I don't think it's cheating. I think it's just, you know, we'll take your money and it doesn't matter. You don't even need donations. You just, yeah. you just pay for tuition where you just don't get any benefits. You don't get a scholarship because you don't meet the requirements. But you can pay to come here. We'll let anybody in that wants to come. Matt said you only have to cheat to get into good schools. Yes. I think North Carolina is a pretty good school, though. No, it's not. No, I mean, it's I understand not. they had the academic scandal and all that, but it. You know, I think it. You think, it, you think it's that not was as good as Duke? It's not as good you as think Wake that Forest. was just like a once over? No, probably not. Probably not. All right, that's going to wrap up today's show. Unless there is anything else that has broken, and I'm no, not seeing anything. I don't have anything. Wonderful. All right, you guys in the chat, you know how we do. We appreciate you guys very much. Share the show out. Tell your buddies about it. Uh, we definitely appreciate you hopping in and helping drive the show every single day. Matt closes us out. He says, "Yeet." And we will probably see Matt in person at some point this weekend or maybe on the show on Friday. So, uh, with that said, go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to sportsbookreview.com. Do yourself a favor. Go get informed. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms. Share the show. Leave a nice review on the podcast. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And we will see you tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.